When studying the history of the Assyrian Empire, one cannot overlook one of its greatest kings, Shamshi Adad I. With strong leadership and strategic vision, he left a profound mark not only in Assyrian history, but also in the civilization of the ancient Near East, Shamshi Adad. I was not only a great military ruler, but also a creative and talented leader. He promoted territorial expansion, consolidated power, and laid the foundation for the prosperity of the Assyrian Empire. Though his era has passed thousands of years ago, his legacy still lives on in historical documents and archaeological sites, helping us better understand the golden age of Assyria and the role of Shamshi Adad I in shaping this civilization. In the aftermath of the decline of the Sumerian Empire, formerly Sumerian city-states along the banks of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers splintered off. Each city had its own king, army, and deity. The Akkadian city-states in this northern region, once subordinate partners to Sumerians, gained independence after Sumer's decline, among them the city of Ashur. Named after the god Ashur, the city's kings represented the deity in governing the land. As the significance of Ashur city grew, so did the reverence for its deity. With the city's prominence, its residents renamed the deity after the city, giving rise to the god Ashur. Magnificent temples were constructed to honor this new deity, and as the city flourished, Assyrian worship became the predominant religious form for the local populace. This deity was imagined as a robed man wearing a crown and wielding a bow often depicted in sculptures standing atop a winged disc overlooking the world in the Golden City, he protected. Initially, Asher was a city of tents and mud-brick houses with thatched roofs, humble beginnings indeed. Throughout Sumerian rule, Assyria capitalized on its natural advantages, situated strategically along the Tigris River, and constructed walls to form a formidable fortress. The rivers of the Mesopotamian region were lifelines, providing fresh water for drinking and irrigation for agriculture. Terrain challenges were addressed to facilitate easy river traffic, promoting trade and the exchange of goods. Tin and textiles were primary trade items, propelling Assyria into a prosperous and affluent commercial center. Studies indicate that by the second millennium BCE, most houses had transformed into expansive palaces, with wealthy families owning considerable wealth beneath their floors including jewelry made of gold, silver, and gemstones. From this prosperity, the Assyrian population coalesced and became known as the Assyrians. However, little is known that Assyria was established under the reign of the Amorite origin king, Shamshi Adad. Shamshi Adad is believed to have acquired a small kingdom in the city of Akalatum, not far from the city of Ashur although its exact location remains undetermined to this day. In the early years of his reign, he faced some of the most challenging obstacles, contending with territorial expansionism in Ashnuna, led by Epik Adad II. When Epik Adad II passed away in 1818 BCE, his son Naram-Sin ascended the throne, not to be confused with the Akkadian king of the same name who ruled centuries earlier. With Naram-Sin's fierce onslaught, Shamshi Adad was forced to flee and seek refuge in Babylon, indicating that his small kingdom had succumbed to the might of his adversary. Naram-Sin annexed the kingdom, creating a challenging period for Shamshi Adad. After serving for several years as a mercenary commander for the Amorites in Babylon, Shamshi Adad returned in 1811 BCE with a large force to reclaim his kingdom. Three years later, he seized Asher and replaced the previous king. However, the people of Asher likely felt apprehensive being ruled by an Amorite lord. Shamshi Adad's army became like ferocious lions, defeating enemy forces and seizing opportunities for him to ascend to power. Despite being an outsider, he had a fondness for the city of Asher and lavished its people and temples with much gold and silver. Shamshi Adad not only defeated enemies but also gained the trust and loyalty of the Asher populace through his decisiveness and generosity. Though initially met with apprehension and opposition from some, Shamshi Adad's adept management and development of the city gradually earned him the trust of the people. The bestowal of gold and silver also helped him garner support and respect from the populace. Shamshi Adad transformed Asher from a conquered city 
into the power center of the Assyrian Empire, ushering in a new era of prosperity for the kingdom. Shamshi Adad I undertook a series of military campaigns across the region of modern-day northern Iraq, known as Upper Mesopotamia, to make Assyria the most powerful nation of the era. He unified the Amorite tribes in the northern regions between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, posing a significant threat to Assyria. One of his greatest victories was the capture of the city of Mari, strategically located and wealthy in the southeast of Ashur. Shamshi Adad implemented harsh punitive measures, including executing all members of Mari's royal family to ensure stability in the region. Subsequently, he chose the city of Shubat Enlil as his residence in his later days. However, to consolidate power, Shamshi Adad also installed his son Ishmael Dagan as king in the city of Ekalatum, a few kilometers from Asher, and maintained colonies in Anatolia. He also expanded the kingdom to the kingdom of Mari along the Euphrates River and installed another son, Yamash Adad, as king. Assyria under Shamshi Adad's reign dominated the entire northern Mesopotamia and neighboring regions in Anatolia and northern Syria. Apart from being an outstanding military commander, he was also a skilled administrator. Shamshi Adad allowed conquered territories to maintain some of their previous customs while using state resources to construct magnificent architectural structures like the Ishtar Temple. Upon his death, the region he ruled also fell apart. He was a potent ruler, but his sons could not maintain the stability he had achieved. Shamshiadad often admonished his sons, particularly Yamashadad, for their incompetence in their roles as rulers. On one occasion, when Yamashadad sought his father's help regarding a grain issue, Shamshiadad bluntly refused in a letter. I have given you this city. Why must you always ask me to solve your problems? If you can govern your city, then hold on to it yourself. If you do not wish to rule the city, there are plenty of capable individuals out there. I will not waste my time handling your affairs. Ishmedagon will also not spare his time to address your issues. A true man must know how to govern his own empire. Through this letter, we sense Shamshi Adad's dissatisfaction with his son, while he shows some favoritism towards Ishmi Dagan. In another letter, Shamshi Adad also expresses his anger. With yourself, how long will you rule? You are but a child, not a man, aren't you? Is your chin without a beard? How much longer will you neglect your city? Do you not see that your brother is leading a mighty army? Do your job well and hold on to your city. Though there are not many records of Shamshi Adad's letters to Ishmadagan, we still perceive his sternness towards his son Yamash Adad, as well as his concern for Ishmadagan. However, with limited documentation regarding Shamshi Adad's correspondence with Ishmadagan, it is difficult to assert that he was not equally strict with Ishmadagan. After the death of Shamshi Adad I, the Assyrian Empire faced significant challenges and found itself in a vulnerable geographical position. The prosperity of Shamshi Adavarthar aroused envy among neighboring kings and tribes, and he and his sons had to confront numerous threats to their power. Following Shamshi Adad's death, Eshnunna launched attacks on the cities surrounding Asher. News of his death spread, and his former adversaries began to move to overthrow his sons from the throne. Several years later, Yama Shaddad was expelled by a man named Zimri Lim. Zimri Lim claimed to be a prince of the Mari dynasty and ascended to power with the support of Yarim Lim, the king of the Amorite kingdom west of Mari. They solidified their alliance through the marriage of Zimri Lim to Yarim Lim's daughter. As for Yama Shaddad, his fate remained uncertain. Ishmael Dagan also faced invasion from Eshnunna, led by Ibal Pl2. Ibal Pl2 took advantage of the chaos following Shamshi Adad's death to annex much of eastern Assyria, including Ekalatum and Asher. Ishmadagan fled and took refuge in Babylon, similar to what his father had done before. However, Ibal Pl II was eventually defeated by a coalition consisting of Zimri Lim, Hammurabi of Babylon, and Sukhanlmah of Elam. 
Ishmidagan may have returned to Ikelatum and allied himself with Hammurabi in the north. Later, Hammurabi took control of the entire northern region, including Ikelatum. Although there are no records of Ishmidagan's actions, he likely became a puppet in the hands of Hammurabi. Assyria flourished until a bigger fish swallowed them up. Shortly after Shamshi Adad's death, Hammurabi conquered almost all the territories once ruled by Assyria. Hammurabi repurchased Asher in 1763 BCE, ruling over the city and marking the end of ancient Assyria. Throughout their journey through time and history, King Shamshi Adad Y and the Assyrian dynasty faced many challenges and upheavals. Despite dedicating their strength and knowledge to triumph in wars and conquests, their empire could not avoid dark periods and decline. Although Assyria eventually fell into the hands of Hammurabi and Babylon, the legacy and experiences of Shamshi Adad I live on in history. They are symbols of strength, courage, and resilience in an era full of challenges. Although their lives ended in tragedy and failure without the beginnings of Shamshi Adad, would there still be Assyria? What do you think about ancient Assyria? Was Shamshi Adad too strict of a father? Please leave your thoughts in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe to continue the journey of exploring ancient history with us. Thank you for paying attention and listening.